What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com. Welcome to the Reverse Diet Update vlog series. This is for week 19, 19 weeks in, which means I've only got one more week left of this reverse diet officially because I'm probably going to go for about 20 weeks in its totality. Uh, but lots happened in week 19, so let's dive into that. So week 19 started off on 325. My weight was 185.3. And with this week, my, my main goal here lately has been just to be consuming between about 4,500 calories and 5,500 calories. That's pretty much where I've felt most satiated, and I feel good at that intake. So that's kind of what I've been trying to target. I'm trying to basically consume a minimum of around 250 grams of protein and 350 grams of fat. And if it's above that, that's fine, but I don't really want to drop below that. But I'm, I'm pretty fast and loose right now with the macros, trying to return to that degree of baseline uh, post reverse diet. So between 4,500 and 5,500 calories. So diving into the spreadsheet here, uh, we were at 359 grams of fat, 248 grams of protein, uh, 40 grams total carbs. Now my total carbs have gotten higher because just by definition, there's been more trace carbs because I'm consuming so many more calories now. So total carbs have been averaging between 30 and 40 most days here. Um, so 4,300 calories there, um, and then just kind of going throughout the week, uh, you know, my weight stayed relatively consistent, 185, 186, 185, 186, 188, um, 185, 189, so a little bit of flux in fluid retention because of the, you know, broader window of calories that I'm allowing myself. Had I tightened that in more, there would be less fluctuation in fluid, but because I'm operating at a pretty broad range right now, my sodium isn't quite as consistent. My food choices aren't quite as consistent. All quality food choices, but a little bit more variability, which is obviously going to result in a little bit more fluid retention variability as well. So that's kind of what we got going there. The average for the week uh, was about 71.5% of my calories coming from fat, and the average caloric intake was 49.29. So pretty significantly higher on the calories than I was even at the start of the prep. The prep started me at about 3,000 calories, so I'm consuming almost 2,000 calories above that, and my weight is holding relatively stable, so I feel pretty good there. Let's just dive into chronometer here, look at some of the foods that I've been consuming. I've been doing about two bricks a day, uh, so I'll train usually around 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'll have two bricks between 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. rather and 10 a.m. Um, sometimes I'll throw in a carnivore bar or two, but that's just a quick, easy way for me to get some fats, proteins, uh, and fuel in post-training. Two bricks is leaving me satiated pretty good, so I'm not been complaining there. And then for meals, uh, my meal two, most of this week was uh, a pulled pork mix that I made. I use the macros from the Just Meats brand, Texas Pulled Pork, but it's, it's actually one that I made myself. Uh, but I feel like the macros are pretty accurate. So just a pulled pork, had that more often than not. Had some ground uh, lamb. On Monday, um, some ground beef on Tuesday, and just had some veggies. I uh, had quite a bit of veggies on Wednesday to kind of see how my body would respond to the veggies and totally find there a little bit more fluid retention as a result of that veggies and the fermentation, uh, but I had a lot more veggies than I normally do because I normally have zero, uh, but my body seemed to handle that pretty well without any issues. Um, some eggs, you know, pretty much the typical stuff. Um, carnivore bar. And then had some pistachio butter. First time I had that, that was pretty good. My, my body responded well to it. Um, some cheese, no issues with the dairy. And then, um, you know, some venison on Sunday. So one thing I was uh, wanted to bring to y'all's attention, in the reverse diet, in a building phase, a lot of people in the tr conventional bodybuilding dieting space recommend about an 80-20 split, 80% 80 of your nutrition coming from good quality sources, 20% coming from cheats you know like cakes pies ice cream junk food and throughout my whole reverse diet throughout my whole prep throughout every day of my life i don't really operate within that 80 20 parameter i pretty much eat quality foods 100 percent of the time like my idea of a cheat meal by my standards is like a spoonful or two of peanut butter but it's like all natural organic peanut butter in which the only ingredients is peanuts uh, so when you live this lifestyle, when you're following a protocol, a ketogenic diet, um, 
and you enjoy the foods you eat, you don't really need to deviate from those quality foods. Yes, with the reverse diet in the building phase, I'm going to be a lot more lax with the calorie counting. Um, I've not been lax with the calorie counting here. Everything's been tracked and accounted for. But I'm not allowing myself these cheat meals because I don't even desire them. I would rather eat more food as I have been, but it's all been quality food. It's 100% quality food. Like I haven't felt guilty about a single thing I've consumed. Even when I had those really high 8,000 calorie days during um, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, Yes, there was some like keto desserts, but it was like natural organic almond flour. So like still really high quality ingredients relative to what most people would consider a cheat meal. So when you consume high quality foods, even if it's at a higher caloric intake, you don't have that guilt associated with it. And you're less likely to kind of fall into this binging purging uh, scenario because of your guilt triggered, you know, eating habits. So that is one point I really want to bring home with this reverse diet. Even though I'm eating more food, it's all quality food, and my body responds much better to it. I don't feel poorly. I don't have any GI distress. I don't have any issues that would be brought on by having sub-quality food. So that's key right there. Uh, as far as the composition is looking, um, let's dive into some of these pictures here. So obviously, putting on some weight, not near as lean as I was in the competition prep, obviously, but still holding on to a pretty good de degree of definition. Still have separation in my muscles. Still have visible abs. Abs. Uh, I'll never lose the visible abs. Like they're obviously not near as pronounced as they are when I'm prepping. Uh, but I will maintain visible abs throughout the entirety of my building phase as well. And I think that's kind of a good proxy. Like there's no reason to lose sight of your abdominals. Like you're not going to be super dialed in. I'm going to have more fat around my midsection, my lower back. Uh, but I, there's no need to get so big in a building phase that you lose all shape and form and function and mobility. So this is pretty much as heavy as I will likely get. You know, I've hit 189 a couple times. Uh, I don't really see myself needing to go much beyond that. All of my lifting markers have improved drastically. My strength is literally increasing beyond what it was prior to the prep commencing. So I feel really good about all my strength markers. They're really good about everything, really. I went and got a DEXA scan. So, yes, yeah, so you can see these abs, visible abs, visible obliques, and that will pretty much be the degree of definition I'll continue to maintain throughout the building phase in its totality. Uh, so I feel pretty good about that. I can live with that. Uh, but I got a DEXA scan on Thursday. So let's go to that real quick. Uh, so I weighed in at 186.1 on the day of the scan. And let's get to the relevant markers here. So this is just kind of got it divided by region, left arm, right arm, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see here. I want to get to the overall percentages. Okay, here we go. So as you can see on this page here, measure date of 328-2024, uh, body fat 13.1% and... Lean tissue in grams, 83,023. Um, lean grams, 72,180. Fat-free mass in grams, 75,215. So what that means, and I'm going to do a full recap on this with the final reverse diet video next week, but what this means is that I am at 13.1% body fat at the conclusion, relative conclusion of this reverse diet. That is about three percentage points leaner than I was at the start of the prep. So as is true with all of this, you want to improve your starting and stopping position every time you cycle through these seven phases, and I have effectively done that. I started the prep at 16% body fat. I am down. I got down to 3.9% body fat at the depth of my prep, and I've reverse dieted up to 13.1% body fat, so three percentage points leaner than I was at the onset of the prep. Yet, I am consuming between 4,000 and 5,000 calories, which is significantly higher than it was at the onset of the prep. My lean tissue is higher than it's ever been. So I have more lean mass on me now. I weigh more now, but I'm leaner and I have a higher percentage of lean mass than I have ever had. So in, in essence, I've improved my starting position for the next time I go into a competition prep. So I feel really good about that. I'm not going to be doing another competition prep anytime soon, but I've got a really good base to start from 
as I go into that next prep. And I'm going to spend the next several years building on that base even more, more lean tissue, uh, just better overall form, shape, and function. So I've effectively improved what I will look like the next time I step on stage, which is the goal. You want to be getting better every single time you cycle through these phases. So many people go through a competition prep via conventional means, and they lose a ton of lean tissue. They totally wreak havoc on their hormones, their metabolism. They set themselves up for failure. They do another prep far too soon. They wind up looking worse the next time they step on stage than the, day, than the time prior. The goal should always be to look better every single time you step on stage to always be improving. And I have illustrated that you can do that via this method without carbohydrates following this ketogenic protocol via the seven phases. So I feel very good about that. And I'll do like a full-blown side-by-side comparison and recap of all of this with the next video. But I'm very pleased with these DEXA results. 13.1% body fat is pretty much where I want to be hanging out throughout the entirety of the building phase. So I feel pretty good about that. I also got updated blood work. I went in on uh, this Monday, so the time of this recording, and got all labs drawn. So I will be going over those results in the next video as well. Uh, so I can kind of put an end cap on this reverse diet and show you all exactly where I've ended up. Uh, but all in all, feel very good about the reverse diet, feel very good about the prep, feel very good about everything, feel very good about my composition right now and my overall performance metrics as it relates to my training and just the direction things are heading. So that is a wrap on this one, week 19. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week for week 20 and the conclusion of the reverse diet.